Good morning, Pierre. We are live. Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to another special edition of the early edition, the Hockey Nation live show. This is you, co-host, uh, Coach Francis directly from the green room uh, this morning, and we have to go all the way to the West Coast to find uh, another co-host, uh, the guy on my right side, maybe on your left side, or maybe in front of you. This is Michael DeVellano. Morning, Pierre. You had another late night. It was not too bad, honestly. One overtime at Carolina in uh, Nashville, but they scored very early. Jordan saw call score. And yeah. um, that's a uh, you know, great game for everybody on the floor Nashville. And uh, I think Nashville played well. Again, uh, for me, it's the goaltender, right? The goaltender make a big trend for them. Yeah. They show and perseverance. You never give up. And um, we have to give give all the credit for the goaltender and he proved for anything, for any players, for anybody in the world, it's not about you can do accomplish everything in your life. Because you know that the, the, the mantra of hockey was said you need a goaltender six foot and plus six four, six five, and six six and he's six, not that. <laughs> right? He's five eleven, this guy, and yep. he still find a way to block. And make a save so um we have to give him credit and uh, everybody like thinking like you need to be six foot to play in the show yeah just prove for everybody um, well you got two of them in one game pierre so, uh, <laughs> you, you know. got two guys that are like you know that we we see it because we go to the draft and we've had a goalie like from everett who's drafted fourth last because he's six foot tall and his stats blow everybody away and yet here you go. UC Sorrow is like 5'10, 5'11. The other goalie's six foot, maybe. So you got two guys that are playing phenomenal. I mean, they both played excellent in this game. Yeah. Um, you know, at some point, many people was questionable about the fact maybe it's time maybe to change the goaltender for Carolina, right? Because um, maybe not. <laughs> And then definitely after that, he's still hanging there. And it's funny. It's a funny game because honestly, yeah, full goal during the regular time is only two players called the goal. I know. Uh, That's so you know funny. I mean? Yeah. So Trennan, uh, I think his name's Trennan, right? Is that right? Trennan, yeah. yeah Trennan did. scored two and then Nekish scores two. Yeah. So it, it was a great game. I mean, it looked like Carolina was on the ropes. I was like, wow, Nashville's going to go up here. And they fought back. They got the second goal by Nekesh. But Nedeljkovic faced like, you know, 25 shots. I think uh, the other goalies faced like 30, though, right? 36? 37. Yeah. 37 shots. So Carolina was all over him for a while there. <laughs> it was like, but what a great game. This series has turned out to be way better than I think anybody could have hoped for. Now it, it, it's funny I, because it's very physical. 66 hit from Carolina yesterday. Uh 106 hit. Um Toronto only 16 hit last night. Interesting. So it'd be very interesting to see that. Uh, welcome everybody. I know Michael is is in. We have Darren O'Reilly back in the house today. Hopefully, Darren, you're doing well, and you're ready for the game, big game tonight. A couple of get big game tonight, so it'll be interesting to see that. Um, but again, that that game, like you know, another Jordan Saul is fourth of the series. That's pretty amazing. That's amazing. Um, but this guy is like now probably the best stall, right? Like he's just waited it out. You know, he's he's a little younger, obviously, but 32, veteran guy, captain of his team. And he finished the season off really well. He had a great year overall. That might have been his best year. Um, I, I think, you know, he's a, I believe he would be in the top for two trophies. One's going to be the, the Cell K, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. I think he's going to be really, really well. Maybe the Lady Bank, but uh, Lady Bank, but I think he could be the one right there. Uh, welcome also, Villior. Uh, pleasure to have you this morning. Always bring a great comments. Have been, he's a new. Inside the uh, Hockey Nation Live show, I think he showed up yesterday. Yeah. And uh, we still at 204 today, this morning. Oh. So, uh, we cleaned up the house last night. A couple, of, a couple of people was not very nice, so we cleaned up the house last night. We cut Oh, a couple no. Of what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's are happened, you, right? When you are grow. you getting upset about people because they don't like Canadians? 
No, I'm talking about people's stupid stuff on the online, and so I, we cut, I block them and whatever. <laughs> so I think it was subscribed, and then we go lower. I guess. Oh my god! Yeah, we 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 want everybody to come and play play nice with everybody else. We we yep. get funny sometimes. Justin Williams around this time. What's his retired Mr. Game number seven? Yeah, for sure. I think he put um, basketball spamming. Who needs that? It was terrible, but uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. Just like, <laughs> um, so yeah, Justin Williams. I think sent a, a message on Twitter, didn't he, to the team? I think he might have. There was something about that the other day where Justin Williams, Carolina Twitter. He worked with the Carolina also. Yeah, there's some. Oh, there he is. I was looking at this the other day. Let's friggin' go, Canes. Um, let's hear you tonight, Kaniac. So he was calling out the fans. Uh, and, you know, this is interesting because I think we've talked about this all year. I I would absolutely think that Rod Brindamore would be top two choice for Jack Adams. I mean, he's done such a phenomenal job in three years. They couldn't get a sniff at the playoffs before this. Well, I, I think he's going to win it for me. I think so. I think he'll be like a very close with Kenville. I think the two of them are really close. Uh, you're going to have three other people involved. I think uh, Bruce Cassidy won last year. Uh, maybe in another one close. I don't think so he will win. I think <laughs> Dean Averson will be a part of this race. Yeah. And uh, finally, I think also, um, depending on what's happening now, but Sullivan mm -hmm. for the Pittsburgh could be another one, I believe. Could be yeah, a great top year. three finalists. So for me, they are the, the only one over there could win the Jack Adams uh, definitely uh, for, as a coach of the year. But uh, again, uh, it was a you know, and yeah, Benar. The only thing I would say with Lior is Benar. He have a a lot of horse in front of him. I in effect like you know, um, I don't know, he, man. He's done a great job, Pierre. I mean, yeah, of course. He, you know, I, mean, I don't want to describe. I won't get consideration, but it would be in consideration. It would be the top five coach, yeah, six, that's, right? That's I just cool. like I don't see him winning. Um, like I feel like Michael, if like he was winning the prison trophy with in first place West Division, maybe 10, 10 point or 12, 14 point, and the team are only like seven, eight, you know what I mean? Like something like really like more bigger i think that would change everything but uh i think that's what i, I believe so it would be interesting to see that yeah I, I tend to think again it's it's evison maybe coach q rod Brindamore to me has got to be in that mix but there is a good i mean bednar really like they were last in the nhl how many years ago is it four now or five so he's i don't know if he ever gets the respect that he deserves like and, you know, for that matter, like, Sackick's done a great job. I agree with you about video about that one, for sure. Um, and, you know, so um, before we jump on the game last night, oh. I think, you know. <laughs> so does other teams. <laughs> uh, I think you have a couple of uh, news around this. I think the one you have already is Gretzky joined the Turner Sport as an uh, NHL analyst. He's going to get on this contract. Uh, and I, I'm surprised, but he got $3 million, Michael. A year? No, I think he's going to be um, two, three years contract, but he got $3 million um, to follow Turner to get that one. And I'll be honest with you, I believe he's going to be great. I really believe he's going to be a great asset on that TV show. Uh, like what, Because he loves the passion, he has a game, he's a really a human being, he's a good person. I think he's going to bring... A lot of great things about. I'm sure you have a lot of story he about that. Be great. He, he's he's such a gentleman. He's just obviously a student of the game, and um, I don't know. It, it was weird. Like Edmonton just has so much drama every year in the off season around the front office. It's so bizarre, and I just don't know what to make of it. Well, uh, first of all, you know, he, he, he just left the Edmonton because he got that contract with them and he got that opportunity to do that. So uh, that's the reason I don't think so. He, he have, was the president he have any... and a partner. I don't get it. So what, he gave up his equity? He, no, he, he was, was just a represent. He, he was just like... Um, and he was like, a No, no, no. He was uh, 
prison then or something like uh, yeah, he was a, 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 and a like partner. A, a partner a role partner a vice chairman of the Edmonton Oilers so he was saying. only do that he was not like the, the 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 have a specific role for the team so my point is like you have nothing to do with what happening at the off the, the he got sweep or everything like that he's not mad about them he just have an opportunity to work on TV and that's what he picked that job that's my that's point here weird um man. so that's what happening um so the, the, the the TV contract next year I'm trying to understand so there's the streaming deal with Disney right is that ESPN yes so you have two two contracts one is ESPN streaming and they have also live every two years they won the Stanley Cup and it with TNT they have also a contract with TNT present also every two years the Stanley Cup and they have also the real go uh, live on the TV exactly like NBC well hopefully it's a lot better than NBC because NBC has been like the worst TV and streaming experience <laughs> like it's like well, then, uh, you know what I mean like right now it's playoff is really bad I've been with you like you know, that horrible. but I, I think um I, I think you go with at least with ESPN, you you, you bring quality and return okay. on that for years. And I think it'll be interesting to see that. Uh, the only thing my I I'm upset about live streaming, you're about 30 seconds behind everybody. I'll be honest with you, Michael, with NBC right now. If you watch the game <laughs> NBC, you still 10 seconds to 15, 20 seconds behind people in Canada. Yeah, it's crazy because they're trying to make sure they can censor things. Well, I, I think it's because it, they pick up the game from uh, Sportnet, right? And I'm sure the people in Canada, if they watch NBC, uh, but from Sportnet, everything like that, you're behind everything like that. I'm pretty this, sure. There's always, I mean, traditionally, because they're cable network, that legacy, they're, they, have, they have to, by law, have an 8 to 10 second delay on live programming. So they, that because if someone says something offensive, then they can interject. And that's what it's about. Whereas if you go for a streaming service, they don't care, right? They, they don't have the same rules. If you're subscribing to a streaming service, it's like satellite TV it's just, or satellite uh, radio. They don't have the same rules. So I don't know. I, I think they've done a really poor job of programming. Like the, the games are all over the place. They're on six different channels, especially for the playoffs. And the streaming experience is incredibly frustrating because – You'll pick a game that you want to watch, and then they're showing you horse racing, and you go, "No, I picked the game." And then they show you a commercial, and then they're showing you like Smash Up Derby. It's like very buggy, so I th it can't go away fast enough. The every year I deal with this, and it drives me up the wall, and I complain about it. So hats off to get rid of them, and I, I think that there's only upside from here. <laughs> I imagine Disney's going to do a much better job. Yeah, we'll see what's happening there. Uh, yeah, Mo, you're right about that. I think uh, Coach K, because so there was much better expected. Yeah, uh, of course, 200000 per month. Um, for Gretzky? It's what I got me. It's $3 million for everybody said on the Elliot film and everything like that. So it could be 200 per month. That's kind of something like that. Um, yes, he's a great, and I yeah. feel it would be great, be great behind the mic for me. I think it would be good. And he's good also. His icon and you know what he bring to the game and what he's been in the game i think it's great to see that i, I think yeah. like you know it, it's not going to be like the like the Charles parkley uh funny guy like that but a guy with a lot of melee and hockey on any level i think it's great to have him or aboard and uh, so great for him to tnt to get that and i think that'll be good to to have him over there yeah. um you know do you see this one where Kadri's going to appeal his suspension? Yeah. So can he drop from eight to six? I don't think so. I'll be very surprised uh, about that. But um, ahead, man. at that moment, I don't see anything change from there. I don't see anything changing. He's no. getting he, – he's it's it's a pattern. Like they, every year this guy does this, and he's hurting guys for no reason. There's no value in the play. He what, should just sit it out and – yeah, so but we'll the, see what happens about the, that the one. The problem is the next time he does it, what happens? <laughs> yeah. Like, is he going to hurt someone really, really bad? Yep. The NHL Plus safely um, put fines uh, Ryan McDonald $5,000 for the cross checking on the forward Mason Marsh Marshman. And they find also Pat Maroon as fine 38 79.31 
for unsportman late like conduct at the end of the Monday night game against the Florida Panthers. So both of them was um, fined by the NHL player safety. safety. Um, the New York Calendars will have about $9,000, uh, $9,000, 9,000 people tonight. They increased from $6,800, $6, uh, well, dollars, $6,600 people. <laughs> I'm with the. I'm still I'm with the fine right now. That's what happened in there. Uh, maybe you maybe know him. I'm sure you know his brother. But the Colorado Avalanche have signed Jean Luc Fondi to a three years untradeable contract. Uh, Fondi, I believe he was a four five oh, yeah. overall pick, 2019, I believe, or something like that. He's the brother of Liam Fondi for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, both these guys can really skate, Pierre. This yeah. is a guy we didn't talk about, by the way. So we should. I want to touch on him. But so Fowdy, his brother, I think, is uh, you know he he's got the potential to be a bottom, not bottom. He'll be like a second line winger, maybe. I haven't seen Jean Luc play too much, but both these guys are GTHL kids. It's interesting. He had to go overseas to play last year because in Toronto and in Ontario, there was no hockey. So he he got to play in the AHL a little bit, and I is this Germany or is this Sweden? Hockey Etan, maybe Yarmo knows. Is it Sweden? It's Sweden. So he played in Sweden for a bit. <clears throat> you want the Habs series to go to seven? Well, that, good luck, buddy. It's gonna be tough. Man. I don't think that's gonna happen, but you never know. Um, when, yeah, so it's interesting. He he's a, he played for the Toronto Titans too, which is interesting. This is a, one of the twelve GTHL teams in the Greater Toronto Hockey League. Darcy Tucker, there at two thousand contract for three years over there, so it'll be interesting about that. Talking about Gretzky, I want to talk about our soul effect. The also TNT sign. Uh, Kenny Albert and Eddie Old Chick. So I think they pick up a couple of people from NBC. And uh, we already know ESPN, Harry, Ray Ferraro, and Brent Boucher. Sweet. Now, I'll be curious about where Pierre, 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 Pierre uh, McGuire, McGuire is going to be. So Pierre McGuire doesn't have a spot now? He is not Harry yet. Huh. I like Pierre McGuire. Let's so I don't get him know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know he's going to be NBC uh, with um, TNT yeah. or. Yes, Ben will be interesting about that one over there. So um we'll have to start getting some of those guys on here. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I one guy we didn't talk about, which is the Detroit Red Wings signed their second round draft pick, Jonathan Bergeron, to a three year deal. I don't know if you've followed him. And I mentioned well, we talked about this two days ago. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember that. Bergeron, but... yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about him. Um yeah, you mentioned pretty, about him like he asked, you said something about him like um I, I, it's I happened watching, Friday last week or something like that. Yeah, so I mean this this is kind of one of those things we're all very interested to see him coming over. And I've been watching a lot of his prospect videos, and it's probably worth checking in on him because you know, we say that they don't have a top top tier prospect. And man, I mean, the more I watch him, he's got like elite level skill, like but what's interesting is there's an interesting story about, I think, where his dad got sick and his brother took over coaching the team. And his brother has coached him all the way up because his dad had cancer as a kid when his, he was a kid. And his brother um, has basically coached him all the way up until last year. So it's kind of an interesting story to check out if you ever get a chance. I see. Um. If uh, send with our game number five, David Perron would be back, but unfortunately... Cannot be back because St. Louis is out. Uh, Jacob Slavin uh, played yesterday back in the lineup for the Carolina Hurricane. I think make it better of them. Uh, Alex Newhook got hurt the last game with Colorado, but he's oh, going to really? be ready for game number one this weekend. Montreal bring back Eric Stahl last night, but Lickanen was out. National Predator forward Arvidsson missed the last night game. He did not play. He become now an uh, upper body injury. Uh, UBI with a day today. Finally, unfortunately, Casey the Smith is not available for game number six tonight. 
for the Pittsburgh, and we know already Nick Foligno did not play for the Toronto Maple Leaf. That's concluding, Michael, all the news around the league and NHL for um, Wednesday, May 27. And let's move on to the next. Is about the game happening last night. So the big game last night that you followed, what was kind of your final take on this with the Canadians? And um, it, it's going to be a waste my time talking about them. Uh, but uh, I know you don't have your sweaters in the background. Are you that embarrassed? Or? Uh, yeah, usually I put my. Yeah, that's what I did. I did. I, <laughs> I didn't trade this by purpose. Oh my but God. It's good point. Coach Frenchie's getting off the bandwagon. What the hell? Um, you know, it, it is what it is, right? Um, it's you know, Carey uh, Price is the guy, and they you don't know win game with nobody no, score. No, and no. um. It's just a lack of who they are at the end of the day. Yeah, um, they got flaws. I mean, you know, what I mean, I'm more upset the people of Toronto how they talk about the series, but it's uh, it is what it is. Uh, you know, now it's like the the for me is like for me a hockey fans is like this. Um, a hockey fans is like you have to be loyal with your team and and be not jumping high and not jumping low and that you know for three years. He screen about William Nalanders. He is this, 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 this. Now he has four goals. Now he become the best, the best hockey players, right? Um, now well, they put like Galchenak, like the best hockey player. That's the biggest mistake on Montreal. If you turn that, but you know what? Yes, he have three points yesterday. But what? Go to see the next ten game. How many points he's going to get? And then next year, how many points he's going to get? How many goals he's going to get? Oh, because someone have a great and amazing great night. Now you're going to turn him like the, the, the one of the biggest mis mistake on Montreal and the biggest mistake. He's a great hockey player, everything like that. When he was did not start this, the playoff, Michael, because it was not good enough to play in the lineup. And the only reason he's there because Tavares got hurt. Who? That's what I ne feel me. Nylander? Have, I'm sorry. You're saying Nylander or Galchenyuk? Oh, no, Galchenyuk's nothing, guys. Come on. Like, there's nothing to worry about there. He's just a bit piece. No, He's no, but my point is, like, everybody talk about him on the Toronto yeah. side, if you turn that. But at the end of the day, He's not uh, listen, guy. you cannot game win. At the end of the day, right, um, you cannot win game if you don't score. And listen, Nylander at full goal and Montreal at full goal. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I don't love Nylander at all. I, I watched him last year in the playoffs. They made a huge mistake in the playoffs last year, and they played him at center, and it was like a black hole on that side of the ice. It was terrible without the puck. We all know when he gets the puck, he's dangerous. He's smart. He creates time and space. He can skate at an elite level. And I think what it just emphasizes is you look at the other side of the ice, and there's not that type of player. Like Toronto has high skill players, and that's just the difference. And the way they got them is they sucked for a long time, Pierre. <laughs> they were getting high draft picks when they had Dave Hunter. So, you know, the, and actually not uh, Mark Hunter. So, and actually, you know, that's a name that we don't hear enough about. So if you're talking about replacing Bergevin, somebody's got to grab Mark Hunter, Pierre. This guy built this team through the draft. You can say what you want about Kyle Dubas, but the talent that's there, Marner, well, Matthews was an easy one. And you look at Nylander, you look at the guys like Morgan Riley, that's all because of Mark Hunter. Yeah, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they are better to Montreal, right? It, it's not questionable they were terrible about that. Really well. yeah, we have to give credit on that part. They score enough goal, and you can complain. But I, be, uh, you know, uh, when you go to take up that part over there, um, when the, this getter rock is going to be out of them, or check to see, like, don't click on it because we cannot put a picture. Can you see the Nylander Ned Galchenok dish right there? The play? Yeah, don't click on it, buddy. Can you see the picture on the bottom here? No, a little bit lower. This is the one where he passed behind the right bottom. here, right now, here, right? Okay. If you see this goal, right? Nick Suzuki is at a blue line, Michael. He's yeah. about seven feet behind yeah, um Nylander. And what he, he does, he let him go. He, he yeah. does not do any stride until they realize, wow, it's too late now, have to go. Yeah. And now he score. 
And that's what me, I'm, I'm mad. What is Zuzuki is, it's what reason why he's not a top player because those play like this, he does constant, consistency all the time on defensive side. He can, he does not back checking hard all the time. And this is a great example. I see it. I look at him again five, seven times this morning to just see. And he does not want to get back. You know, that's so you can see Calcio a great play, blah, 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 blah. But he recovers his guy with it. He does not score. That's a big chance with it. But anyway. It's, yeah, I mean, that, that was, that was, it's annoying to watch that because, you know, as a, he's a young player, I get it. But in the end, it's like when you're in that situation, everyone's going hard to the net. You got to be able to count. Your job is not to sit at the blue line and hope you get possession back. You don't have possession. They're rushing your net. So a young guy like that's got to understand you go right to your net and pick up a man. And then when the play breaks up, then you can go back to your normal little spots. So my point to you behind this is like when you play in the playoff, Michael, you have to pay the price. You have Absolutely. to make another step up every time that. And I think right now, half of that team, there's no one like, you know, the story of Thomas Tatao to get removed of the game. He cried and he left the building and he come back after that because he told me, oh, by the way, Star does not play anymore. You, you play tonight. I don't know if you saw that one, but... Um, no, he was upset that he was being benched. No, he was removed at the game, at the practice oh. in the morning. So he left. He, oh. he he left, he kicked out the door and like baby, like a pity, everything like that. And then he come back because he told me, oh, by the way, now Stahl is, he is sick. You yeah. go to play tonight. But that's just show for the rest of the team. It's not good to do that. It's not... It's a, it's a problem of eat and stay or a problem of behavior as a team when you have a player like that thinking just like crying because he does not play tonight. Upset about he does not play, thinking well, about himself. Yeah. I mean, not for I the rest of the team. He, genuinely, I get it. Like he doesn't, I don't think it's a selfish thing with him. Like I don't think he's a bad person. He, he's competitive. I don't doubt he's competitive. And I don't think that guy's ever been sad. I mean, who sat him? Vegas might have sat him, actually. They traded well, Vegas, for him. Well, yeah, the, 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 well, yeah, Vegas did not. He was held to scratch most of right. the time. Yeah, exactly. You know? Now you're saying. Anyway, it, it's just like, uh, <laughs> congratulations, Toronto. He's going to win the next game, hopefully, and then we can move on. It's going to be big, interesting to see. They clean up Bergevin and Tisharm and Time <clears> Timmons <throat> and everything yeah. like that. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see that and everything. So, uh, uh, Spencer and I is going to be there confirmed tonight. Um, he's going to be Spencer and I is going to be there until the end of the season with the Florida Panthers. Michael seems like it. Um, if they lose tonight, is over. If they win, they will be back number seven. If they win, he continues to go all the way with him. Um, that's over. I will not see anybody uh, other than him. Um, so I expect Spencer and I, everything like that. And I think they can create something special tonight. I believe the Panthers can do something. By the way, we're going to do live stream tonight with the Panthers game at 8 o'clock p.m., 7.45 pregame show with uh, the Hockey Nation live show. So I uh, invite everybody to join us to follow the game for sure. Um, tonight. Well, you're doing a great job, by the way. I was thinking that this morning. I don't know if I told you, but I, I, I love what you're doing with the live stream. You've, you've whipped up a lot of people, including people here, that – um, you know, this is how you build a community and you've, you acknowledge people. And I love what you do with the graphics. Like you were right before, like the Ecamm stuff, you've really got dialed in now. So it looks professional. Like it looks great. Like, I don't know why anyone would watch TV versus us. Like at least it's interactive, right? We so have good people, honestly, you know, like Michael people. always repeat. Absolutely. Us is just like a two, three people bring around, but without them, like Villor or Yamo. Yamo is a big part with John Gregor now from Boston. We have Dixie show up the morning. Gator, Tim, one of the best uh, since the beginning of the year with Yamo and Michael Rosenblatt. And, you know, those guys, this is impossible, right? Uh, yeah. How many morning, Michael, here? We came here with nobody around here. And we still consciousness what we love and talking about the game. And that's that's a great thing about that. So, uh, you know, we just want to be grateful for everybody. And thanks again for that. But at the end of the day, we look good because those people, without them, it's of not course, going to be yeah. like this. And we grow. Everybody see that. Uh, you know, sometimes we have 
people not right, but we try to bunny them at the right time. And then uh, I like the fact we make a little bit, uh, not an affiliation, but a great relationship with Frank Well and all the French Canadian people from, uh, you know, Nicola or uh, Matt Mann and Nathalie Nat Lafon with Sly in New Brunswick. It's, and the good thing about this, the only thing I would say, Michael, I'm, where I, I really important for me is to know the person, to know where they're coming from, and to, to talk about. And then well, every time they're coming back, I want to mention where he's coming from. Every time that. So I think the relationship we build, like Yamo, he said bonjour earlier in French, it, it's the beauty behind it. That's what we do here on the live stream, and that's make a difference. And we're not here to compare to anybody. Uh, we just want to create our own culture, our, our, our own brand, and bring the best we do. And the people have a great time when they are with the live stream, the Hockey Nation live show. Yeah, I, you know, it's all about the people. So we really appreciate everyone that tunes in. So yep. tonight, some big games, Pierre. It should be. Uh, you know, it's three teams right now. Uh, on the one side, you face to elimination, right? Game six, game six, all three sets. Let's start with the first one. Well, let's start with the Panthers, like me, because we have a lot of people are here about that game over there. Um, listen, this is like. Um, well, I didn't realize Huberto had ten points already. Yeah, yeah, you have a great round for them. Uh, this this one, you know, two goals, eight assists. Uh, you know, it would be interesting to see what Spencer wow. Knight in the net. Again, that will come for two things for me, and maybe I will be wrong tomorrow morning. But Michael is going to be special team for the the Lightning versus Florida, and then the quality of the performance of the defensemen of Florida Panthers at that game is going to make a difference at the end of the day. And um, the good thing about Florida, what compared like Montreal, Toronto, for example, Florida can can score three, four, five goals. And they prove Vasilevsky is not like unbeatable. Uh, yeah. uh, he's undefeated. Again, everybody mm -hmm. else, he struggled with the Panthers. So hopefully there will be something about that. Le Mario, welcome back, buddy. Yeah, I, I think that Lamario, they got off easy in game one. I mean, you know, the Tavares thing was obviously shocking and that rallied them to focus in. You're, you know, it's interesting to, in that Hab series to me is the contributions of the older guys. Like, this is why they brought guys like Spezza and Thornton in and Simmons, and they're having an impact. Like, Yeah, they, they, they create something spe special absolutely. there for sure, right? Um, I don't know but again, do I believe Toronto, <laughs> and you know, the everybody is happy about that. But I, be honest with you, Toronto does not play the level where they should play because <laughs> when you go to meet a better team, they're not going to realize everybody, spot. right? They cannot, you know, what I mean, like Matthews, one goal, um, you know, they need more. Uh, that's fun between also Montreal, Toronto. Toronto have eight points from defensemen, and Montreal have zero, Michael. Well, the, I mean, we don't talk enough about the Toronto defensemen, how good they are. I mean, if you go down that lineup, we were saying this the other night. I mean, Morgan Riley, he's a top seven or eight defenseman in the NHL. He's so good. Uh, Brody is really solid. He's kind of like a great number three. Justin Hall, like, is very good. He's a big guy, and he does really good stuff. And then you look at, like, um, Sandin's played very well, I think, overall. I made some mistakes, but he looks great when he's got the puck. And he, you've got um, Jake Muzzin. And Jake Muzzin's a grizzled veteran, right? And I, the guy that I mentioned was um, uh, Bogosian. And B we saw Zach Bogosian last year in a kind of that six role. He's a thick guy, man, and he's hard to play against. He's not going to give you offense, but he's a difficult guy to play against, and he's got a little bit of mean streak in him. And so you start adding it up, like the, you don't really have a shift off against them. And the one thing they do very well is most of them skate very well, and they they make breaking out look easy. <laughs> yeah. And that's a big differentiator. Um, compare Spezza, Simmons, Thornton to Stahl and Perry. I mean, Spezza – I, I don't, I've never been a huge Jason Spezza fan. He just makes decisions with the puck that bother you. However, his skill level is still very high, Pierre. He's never been an amazing skater. It's always been about his hands, and he's, a, he's got a great reach, and he's contributing in this series. He's winning faceoffs, and he's helping offensively. Like, he's setting up guys, and he's scoring goals. But, you know, Spezza has been, always been um, 
score against Montreal. He looked like Wayne Gretzky against Montreal. Right. So, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? That has been a shit for him, right? I, I don't, I've never been a huge fan, but. But he find a way in Montreal to produce all the time. So um, yeah. we'll see what happened at that there. Wayne you know Simmons for me has been awesome. That's and he did not do well at being with you around that series. But again, he's not someone's not he's there in case something could happen. I think again Montreal, nothing will happen. But maybe the next series or next one after that, he will maybe contribute more at what he does. But again, he's not like <laughs> make a problem for Toronto or not, but You know, really, he, he's not doing anything where he's the, pissing everybody really, off in front of the net is what he's doing. He, he's he's I, not I, the I, Wayne Simmons of 10 years ago, but he can, he's like making a contribution. I like the way he, he's got. Yeah, he's, he didn't create any impact on that one over there. That's my point behind right now. I, I think know, I, the one's very surprised for me, Toronto, he does win right now. It's Alex Kerfoot, uh, three assists last night. Yeah, he's been all right. Um, he's really competent, right? Like he's not going to hurt you. He'll get some points. But he now he become he plays second line with Nalander and Kalchenuk. So yeah. he did he did move that line play better yesterday. I think he pushed more, and I think he's a where he can't rate more to anybody else from what his, my expectation was not there for him. So uh, yeah, and Thornton's looked pretty decent. I mean, he scored last night. Um, as far as Perry, I mean, I think the incident with Tavares probably took him out of the equation a little bit, and Stahl has been. The, you know, he had some really good years, like not that long ago, like last year and the year before he had, and the year before that, like he surprised us when he got out of Carolina and went to Minnesota, but he does not look like he's going to be. But again, to, like, you know, I, I said, once, once someone talking about Montreal point Anderson to fully or, or Perry or style, they got I, nobody to get them the puck. My point is like, don't point one point, 20 kids, 20 plus right now. Don't, don't tell me Suzuki, we talking that. Everybody want coffee. Coffee was there yesterday. Minus two. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like, you know I mean, like, the forty minus two, and and Zuzuki minus two yesterday. So at the end of the day, you cannot point one players. As someone said, oh, Anderson did not score. He he hits. He said he does not do anything. He he hit seven times last night. So, yeah, but you need someone to get him the puck a lot. Otherwise, and he scores a lot, like in a way that doesn't translate in the playoff. Always like. Because he, no. he's got speed and size and he'll back up defense, but defense aren't going to back up. So I, I don't think, Yarmo, that I agree with this statement. I don't see – I think Toronto's defense is way better than the Jets. Like Morgan Riley is definitely way better than Josh Morrissey, although Morrissey had a great series. Um, who's TJ Brody in Winnipeg? Who is Jake Muzzin in Winnipeg? They don't have him. Even That's Justin Hall, like he, he's better than we give credit for. Yeah, he, he struggled a little bit, I'll be honest with you all, um, this series. Like, he, he's not oh, played the yeah. level he played at the beginning of the season, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I think, one, I think for the, the sixth player you mentioned, I'll be honest with you, uh, Marzen, really what is not recognized more, like, because everybody talk about, and then another one, I think Brody bring the, 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 the stability of that D what they don't get last year with Barry Absolutely. and Cici, uh, uh, Cici, whatever his last name. Yeah, I think that's, is. yeah, that's what I think Brady, Brody for me, that's what really make a difference for there. And, you know, I think, why is this ad thing is ridiculous? Like you keep resetting the whole page. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There we go. Sorry. They're like putting so many ads and it keeps resetting them. Dermot is a, I mean, for, to have Travis Dermot on your third pairing, he's a pretty yeah, good Yeah, he, he, he was healthy. He, he was scratched all, all series. Um, so Sander was played with them. Uh, Sander was illness yesterday, so they bring Dermot. Uh, but it, I think for me, the, you know, they bring Pocosian and Case. Uh, have a better game, Pocosian, yesterday, but he struggled the first three games. Uh, but again, it's a team right now, they, you know, You're looking good if you see what's next thing. Yeah, Sandine's definitely got a high skill level. So Lomberg is funny. I, I I gotta think that the Toronto Jets matchup is interesting for me. Do you feel like the Jets don't aren't an aggressive four checking team? Do you would would you agree with that? They're more like passive. Well, the 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 yes and no because the 
for me, I believe the Toronto have a difficult time because the, what I want to mention, I think, you know, because the third line of Laurie, Co Coop, and um, well, sometimes it's Perrow, sometimes it's Lewis. It depends, right? They four check a lot on on a, on the different on the offensive side. They're yeah. deep, something like that. What happening right now is the the speed of Toronto could on the D, like Morgan Riley, everybody could helping them a little bit better. But I think the problem you're going to get right now and see what Jack Campbell is going to re react is the offensive of Winnipeg. They and got that's what I want to see because Campbell looked great. And yeah, he's he, got nobody challenging. He looked good. I'll, I'll be honest with you, right? 32 shots yesterday. I want to see how many chance on the 30 shot. Like, was like wow, this None. is amazing. Like, wow. Nah. You know, we did not see that, right? It, you have more, maybe three, four, five chance yeah. score for Montreal last night, and it's been like this in the beginning. He's going to have a better test again, a better versus a team with more offensive. That's the next one we have to see for them to yeah. consider what Jack Campbell can do. But again, we have to give him credit. Michael, you have a great year with the Toronto Maple Leaf, we talk that. Yeah. But rip it late to see Chef. My, con my, my not my concern, but my where they have to be careful. Sheffley, it become now, he's cutting back where Sheffley was at the beginning of the year. Wheeler play better. Uh, Colonel is continue to play. Uh, Dubois get, step up a little bit more. Stashley is doing well right now. Heller is back in the lineup. Heller make a big difference The game number three. Oh, number four. Is so yeah. when you play, it's getting better. If you can have that kind of D, the stability of the D, not make too much. DeMello have an amazing, great series again in Montana over there. Right, Pionk have a good year, a good Pionk series. Good. Maurice play a better, better hockey sense. Morgan Stanley step up as Morgan you know Stanley. what I mean. Like we, we talk about this, so we will be see what they're going to do with. <coughs> I think I, because honestly, Michael, um, Toronto have a little bit better offensive, but when you repeat and you face much. always Dressel and McDavid, they can face to Matthews to Minor, right? Yeah. and so I think. And you have a great goaltender like Price Alebach. So it's not so it'll be very interesting the next one for sure. Look, Logan Stanley Yarmo is a much better skater than Chara. And he's 22, but he's got that size and reach. <clears throat> um, for me, like I think you highlight it here. Pionk is a very small defenseman. He's listed at six foot. I'd be surprised if he's six foot Pierre, but he handles the puck very well. He's very smart. He can Brody relance, you know, he can do that that transition yeah. to come back right away. Yeah, yeah. His speed is there. So I think, and then the second thing without mentioning uh, Yamo, and Yamo will be agree with me, I'm sure, is Toronto don't use the physicality of the game. They don't hit. That's why I said Simon is there, but he, he, they don't yeah, use Simon like their game. Right? So they don't have that, like, mm -hmm. 16 hit yesterday, Michael. Well, that, that's why it's going to be interesting for me because you've got in Winnipeg the Lowry line, like that Mason Appleton Lowry line. Like Lowry's a junkyard dog, and he can score, and that's that's going to be hard for them to match up. If you put him up against like Kerfoot, <laughs> you put him up against, frankly, any of Toronto's centermen because that's what they do is they match him against the best guy, and they're a pain in the neck to play against, and they counterpunch like they'll get goals against them. So that, that's one of the things we don't hear about. I, I think absolutely Toronto's defense is better, but you if if Winnipeg can exploit their size difference, and they've got a lot of weapons, they have just as many weapons as Toronto offensively. Maybe All right. We, we're not there yet, Michael. I just realized this. Let's go with what we have to do today. All right. So let's get there. And I would like to ask everybody in the crowd right now on the in the – and the chat room. What is the final score tonight? Your prediction between the Panthers and the Lightning. Most of you guys, you are fans of that one. So put your score, your final score. Who do you think is going to win tonight? The Panthers or the Tampa Bay Lightnings? Is it crazy to say that the Islanders are going to close it out tonight, Pierre? I'm sorry? So we got Pittsburgh versus Islanders, Panthers versus Lightning. Three to two for Florida. Interesting. So you think they'll stay alive? I believe both teams. Uh, you know, my heart. Florida. My heart is the Panthers for the 
More I've been here, that. Michael, for six years. I never see so excited people in the South. Uh, it's sold out, Michael, game number seven. <clears throat> they all buy, you cannot buy ticket anymore. It's all sold out, 14,000. <laughs> oh, this is what I want to this. And then, then they lose, they lose. I would love to have game number seven for the hockey community and state of Florida. That's what I'm looking for. Well, yes, I they can do that. I don't care, but I would like to get there. But it's going to be a very interesting game, uh, you know. And wow. then I, I want, Pen, Pen, you know, Pittsburgh win. No. Uh, <laughs> but again, I, I, because I want game number seven, I like those yeah, game number seven and we don't have that, right? <laughs> but I believe me, I believe, <laughs> I believe right now yeah. that the Panthers have more chance to go game seven at the Pins, Pittsburgh chance to go game number seven. I think Islanders have more chance to win compared to Tampa Bay versus Florida tonight. I, I think that the Islanders will close it out tonight. So I'm with Dixie that the Islanders will win. I don't know if it'll be regulation or overtime, but I think it's going to be a close game. Yep. And it's going to come down to the goaltending difference. And I think the 4-2 wild win, I like that. Because I would I like watching this wild team, Pierre. Um, I'll be honest with you. This I'll be honest with you. This is five oh one tonight. Go tonight. Minnesota is going to be dead tonight. They don't go nowhere. I can promise anything you want to bet against me right now. I will give yeah. it to you. Um, yeah, I, I I hope that's not the case. Yeah, Mo, think, why you pick my score? Yeah, I I think that I don't think it'll be a, necessarily a blowout, but maybe. I, uh, I hope my, the, Michael, look the series right. It should be done already. No. They, the first game could have gone either way. How many shots? Vegas dominate them. One Michael. game. One what? game. Flurry stole a game, and then they went the other way. Last, last game, game, I got four, 13 shots. Yeah, last game. One game. That first game, 1-0. Talbot stole it. My point is, like, they never completely. Flurry stole the, ga <laughs> the game before this. He was totally outshot. So I think it's it's gone back and forth. I think in the end that Vegas will probably win this tonight, but I hope that Winnipeg or uh, the Wild do because I like watching this Wild team. Like it's a great story and they're fun to watch. They're more fun to watch than Vegas. Oh, of course, it's, it, you know what I mean. Like yeah. the, the I, I, I don't disagree with you, Armo. I think that Vegas is going to rise to the occasion. Yeah. I think Flurry will be really good. And but more than anything, it's just they're gonna they're gonna play the way they play best, and they're gonna chip away at you. They'll get pucks to the net, and they'll get past Talbot. I and still. I, I think all both of you are raised. Uh, I think everybody here are raised all right. I think only one, I believe only this game is going to be one way compared to the next the two prior game. I yeah. believe. Right? I, I, think I think it'll bust open. Yes, I think so too. So uh, we'd be interesting to see that. Uh, you know, nope, that's, <laughs> you and know. I, I think the Islanders might do it tonight. I wouldn't be surprised that, uh, like I said, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be so surprised to do that, right? But again, to do, I, I think they need more offensive piss, but of Crosby, Malcolm, know. right? Because Crosby is quiet in this series. There's play well, play hard, but he's not produced a lot of points against Islanders this series, right? But again, Islanders, by the way, happy birthday, Matthews Barzel today. Oh, really? So uh, that's another one. Yep. I Michael don't, don't like Pittsburgh. Um, no. And, you know, we still have a, a couple, we still have a couple of more minutes. Uh, what do you think, everybody, about who, who's going to be the best matchup? Or what do you think you would like to see Boston versus who? So the option is what Islanders versus or, or Pens? Yes. I, I gotta think the Islanders squeak through. It's not a guarantee. This is such a close series. Boston feels to me like they would have a harder time with the Islanders than Pittsburgh. But I think either way, it's gonna be a tough matchup. Boston is really playing at a high level right now, and they got a lot of weapons. Adding Taylor Hall just made that first line even more dangerous. I mean, we, we know they always get huge production from the first line. Now they've got an answer because they were trying to plug in Jake DeBrusque all the time. I, I got to believe that Barry Trotz gives Boston fits. I got to believe that there's nobody to key on on the Islanders to shut them down. But I don't think that's what Boston's going to do. 
Boston should win a series versus Islanders, and they should win versus the Penguins. But I don't think it's going to be – I think this is going to be one of the better series. I mean, I think either way, the second round is going to be great. Yeah. I think it's just going to be different. Like, if it was Pittsburgh, you know, there you got two superstars. you got Jeff Carter playing well. The goaltending is a little questionable right now. It's kind of inconsistent with Jari. He made some game-changing mistakes, right? Islanders, I don't see that. I think the Islanders are going to be just a pain in the neck to play against. They're going to be in your face. They're going to be efficient. When they need to be offensive, they're offensive. And when they're not, they're going to counterpunch and wait for their opportunities. So I think that's tough to play against. It's a chess match, right? Like, yeah, They're greater than the sum of their parts. Yeah, for sure. Entertainment-wise, Pittsburgh's definitely going to be more interesting than the Islanders. <laughs> Yep. yep. <laughs> Mr. Noob. Oh my goodness. I think this is my nephew, Josh. I don't know. Josh, is this you? I think this is my nephew. <laughs> Pierre, let's see. Josh, is that you, buddy? I think it might be. <laughs> I'll have to message him. We'll be at a very interesting to see uh, those three game over there. Um, so, um, it's him. Look at Pierre. We have my nephew Josh on from well, Barry, Ontario. Back. Welcome aboard. Yeah, he's been on our Discord and he's trying to get people to come to our Discord, Pierre. Really? Yep. So if anybody wants to jump on Discord, comment in there and Josh will send you the link. He'll invite you. Awesome. Josh, aren't you in school right now? Isn't there Zoom school? Why are you on YouTube? <laughs> he's on YouTube. <laughs> Are you watching because we're on here or because you like hockey now? Well, Josh, bring all your yeah, he's in school, Pierre. I, I just want to I just want to tell you that group Michael, follow this. Group B at the 2021 World Hockey Championship. Latvia beat Canada. Again? No, but that's what happened, right? Yeah. Then yeah. The Canadian team lost then, they lost then, nothing. Yeah, then Kassantan beat Lavia. So Kassantan? Yeah. Then Germany beat Canada. And then Kassantan beat Germany. Yeah, so I was trying to look at this, like, Canadian roster, and it's weird. Like, there's a mix of young guys and older guys. And, and then USC beat Canada and Kassantan. Then Finland beat USC, and then Kassantan beat Finland. Is it not crazy? I think it's like if you look at the lineups, it's definitely a weird mix. And Gerard Gallant's the coach, so I don't know what that says. So the goaltenders are Aiden Hill and Michael DiPietro. Oh, you can't see this because, as usual, IHF is as bad as Hockey DB. I just want to mention for all the people, for the Panthers fans, Keith Yandel is going to be scratched. Oh, good. Night. There you go. That's good. So it's an interesting lineup. Like Mario Ferraro plays for the San Jose Sharks. He's their first line defense with Colin Miller. You know, Colin Miller is a Buffalo Sabre, right? Maxime Comtois had a great year playing with Adam Henrique. So two Anaheim Ducks guys. Connor Brown had a great year. So they, they've got some players. They're not that bad on paper. I don't know what's going on. But then you look, you're like Owen Power and Troy Stetcher. So Owen Power is potentially a first overall draft pick this year. Um, so he's young. Troy Stetcher played well, but he's like a, you know, a Detroit Red Wing depth defenseman. Your second line is <laughs> Peary, Danforth, and Hagel. So it's 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 a weird mix. Bodan, where, where does Bodan play? Do you remember? Is he Colorado? No. Chicago, right? Chicago. Yep. So you got two NHL defensemen there. Nick Paul, Velarde on third lines. So that's weird. And Bunting had a great year. Bernard Docker. I love Braden Shen. Or Schneider, man. He's going to be so good. Cole Perfetti. Jared Anderson. So they got some guys. It's weird. They're not total junk. They are very young. But still. Yeah, like, they don't have a lot of experience there. You know me? Yeah. So I get maybe that's that was the idea. But it's not like I see over here, like, you know, Tommy Kunackle, like he's a he's an NHL guy, but Toby Reeder, like these are not first line NHL players. Lucas Reichel's very good. 
That guy's yep. really good. Is he Chicago Blackhawk draft pick? I think he is. Interesting. We don't see Fabian. Um, Robbins, um, like John Yamo said, Nitsi Vera is in, and then uh, Jamea yeah. finished coach, and also Robinson's doing well with USC. Eric Robinson's got jets, man. He can really skate. So you I gotta think, think at some point there. he'll be a good offensive player for Col Columbus. What do you think about this rumor? Shay Sean Monahan to Minnesota Wall against the defenseman. Which defenseman? I think it was Spurgeon. I would do it. I don't know. Spurgeon is way better than we give him credit for. And he's their captain, but he's older now, right? Like he's a 1990 and Sean is like in, uh, what is he in eight? Nine? Yeah. Most said is uh, the Dallas Robinson. Who? The rookie Robinson from oh, Dallas. Robertson. Jason Robertson. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's different. Okay. I thought you were talking about Eric Robertson. Yeah. Jason Robertson had a great year. So Sean Manhan's a 94. And I think Spurgeon's a 90, so I would absolutely do this. We know that um, Sean Monaghan's had hip surgery, so that's that's tricky, right? They have a Finnish coach. That's weird. Yeah, Jason Robertson is such a good player. Like, he's way ahead of where I thought. Nudavar in, that's good. <laughs> Yandel, oh, my God. Don't do that. Nick Paul is – but, see, Nick Paul's like a third-line, fourth-line guy, right? So if that's – one of your best guys, then. <laughs> um, and for everybody here, or Michael also. So let's see. Spurgeon is a 19. Let's look here. I think it was 92, no? Oh, I think he might be older than that, Pierre. He's an 89. Wow. So, like, I, I can't see this happening. Like, he's he's played a long time, Pierre. Yeah. He's very good, though, but that I think if you are Calgary, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think, like, I've seen Sean Monaghan since he's, like, 15, and I don't think you, I don't know why, you know, you would want to trade this guy. He's had two down years, but this year was definitely because of injury, and I think last year he played injured too, Pierre. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he had early success for a reason. Monaghan is... That's a tough player to replace. Um, it's because you know, a category they have to do something at some point. Um, <laughs> I you don't know, think that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, they they looking to rebuild every time that will be interesting. It was going to be another team was the off season Please will be here. interesting over there. So he played with um, oh Remy, oh boy, I had an unfortunate thing. It would be that. interesting to see Plan that. DC, um. So Tyler played here, right? So they had Tyler, Tyler Toffoli, Shane Prince, and Sean Monahan. Cody CC was on that team. I, I don't I just gotta think like I don't know. I I I have a hard time with them trading him for not another centerman. I mean, I think the part of what they're maybe thinking is that um you know the the young uh, what's his name? Lindholm is their number one. Yeah, they have Michael Backlum after uh, that. But Backlund's old Pierre, man. He's like in 1990. Yeah, of course. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, but again, it's just like looking for, Answer, uh, looking right. about different things like that. What he, you know. Um, you had the guy right here. His name is Sam Bennett, and he's a 96. <laughs> so we'll be interested to see what he's going to do. Uh, about that one over there for sure and um i think they're barking up the wrong tree there i mean i think they just need to they need to upgrade their second line kachuk had an off year oh they missed a right wing for sure they need a center for kachuk that is going to be higher end goudreau is you know oh they, they need a right wing they, they, that's what was the, the the deadline was looking for a right wing yeah, that, that's it why I think never it's happened. Not far off. I, I don't think they're that far off. So it'll be very interesting for everybody. Thanks again for I don't know. We have a oh, you froze. 
No, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Might have froze, unfortunately. Thank you for everyone joining us. We appreciate all the. Oh, Pierre's back. There we go. Yep. So, um, anything else? Nope. Let's wrap it up. All right, everybody. Thanks again for watching us. And then I will see you tonight. Uh, another live stream at 7 45. We're going to do a pregame between a month, uh, between Montreal, between that Florida Panthers and Dan Bay Lightning. Of course, we're going to be back tomorrow also for the game between Montreal and Toronto, game number five. So, have an amazing, great rest of Wednesday, everybody. Look forward to see you tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, for another early edition of the Hockey Nation live show. See you, buddy. Yamo.